Would you like to be somebody who understands the concept of gradual pain exposure? Then listen to this entire video where I explain the practicalities of exposing yourself to suffering in life, which creates this resilience and then leads finally onto a kind of wisdom about life. So before we get into this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about self-development, dating, Jungian psychology, and how to reduce suffering in life altogether. Let's get into it. So I made a video yesterday on the concept of a corrupted soul. Now a corrupted soul is a soul of somebody who has been traumatized, deeply hurt, and is left with a deep uh, lying emotional scar. Now, the thing, the, the, the downside of a corrupted soul is that it is um, likely to behave, or it, it makes you behave in a volatile, unpredictable way um, if you're exposed to a certain stimuli that pokes the wound. Now, you do see this in some people who they behave strangely or they, they're like, it's like they're hiding something. You don't quite understand the person and you prefer to be around people who don't have this kind of a soul because uncorrupted people are more trustworthy or they seem more trustworthy and they are more um, predictable and you can understand the, 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 their, their configuration, let's say. But the, prob the thing is, um, if you have a corrupted soul, you are so hurt and you are able, if you take certain decisions in life, and behave in certain ways, you can transcend that pain and that gives you access to this life wisdom which is really valuable. Whereas if you are have an uncorrupted soul and you are sort of underexposed to the suffering in life and you don't, let's say, get access to these lessons, these life lessons, you aren't able to really build that life wisdom as much. So I've made, come up with a concept called gradual pain exposure, which is like a soft, a sweet spot between these two, a corrupted and uncorrupted soul, which allows you to be exposed to suffering and gives you access to learn from it without it traumatizing you, let's say. Okay, so what does gradual pain exposure look like practically? I mean, the, the, one of the key purposes of gradual pain exposure are to protect and avoid one's soul from being corrupted. So one should avoid being traumatized and having one's pain capacity exceeded. You want to avoid the maximum pain threshold that you possess from being, let's say, uh, uh, broken or exceeded. Because then the pain touches the core of your soul and leaves a scar which is difficult to heal then. So how do you protect yourself? Here I'm just referring to pre protecting yourself whilst a lot of soul corruption, I think, occurs in childhood actually, but parenting is beyond the scope of this video. So how do you protect yourself? Well, typically we get hurt from other people. Our soul doesn't really get corrupted by falling off a bike, although you can get traumatized by being in a car crash, for example. So how do you prevent yourself from being physically traumatized? I mean, yeah, maybe be more careful so you don't hurt yourself, but don't be too careful or else you won't live in an exciting, like, fulfilling way. You know, if you live too, too carefully with too, with, um, let's say, too, if you're too risk averse, then you, you don't really live properly and you do not get access to, these, to, to this life wisdom, let's say. Like, I think J.K. Rowling said something like, if you don't live properly, you, you fail by default, something like that. If you don't, yeah, something like that. So, okay, well, how do you avoid being hurt by other people? I mean, there are many ways, but a key one is don't be naive. And it, it is safer to say no one too many times than say yes to people one too many times. This is, I mean, the question of how to um, gradually expose yourself to pain and protect yourself from pain is very complex and it would take very long to discuss and it's very theoretical. But I would just say, fix yourself before you build trust with other people. Because um, when the trust is broken, you will have a huge hole, a hole within you, which that person used, used to fill. They used to fill the hole. And when they leave the hole, uh, when they leave, sorry, the hole reaches down to your soul and leaves a scar. Like, they leave and there's a hole which goes very deep and, and, and hurts you. But if you, if you fill the hole independently, then you can build safe bridges 
with other people because you have a stable foundation to build the bridge from. Whereas if the ground is unstable and dependent on external resources from others, when, um, when other people pull the bridge away, you are left with unstable grounds and like a crack, you know, cracks and holes. Yeah, so just, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a, it's a big simplification because I don't know the answer, like the perfect answer. It would take very long to discuss how do you protect yourself. There are so many things like um, who do you trust? Um, how do you determine who to, to trust? Um, what can you do to not break the trust because you are complicit in trust being broken, let's say? Um, not always, but sometimes. And yeah, so this is just a very simple thing. Fix yourself so you are able to not collapse when somebody else breaks your trust. So it's like a, it's a um, preventative measure. So it's something, yeah. So second thing to... Uh, to um, uh, get access to gradual pain exposure is to expose yourself to a healthy growth rate in life is um, yeah so what is a healthy growth rate I think try to do the things that challenge you and you are afraid of at this moment in life and following archetypes so for those who don't know archetypes are sort of behavioral patterns that unconsciously try to anticipate and move you to behave in, in these certain ways a lot according to these archetypes uh, which are basically instincts to, that try to help you survive. Now, be aware of what you're afraid of and try engaging in it. Uh, but focus on those things that seem relevant to your development, to these archetypes. What what is relevant? Like, yes, skydiving might be relevant to your uh, might not be relevant to your development. But going out and looking for a job might be, or going out and socializing might be relevant for an adolescent, for example. Think about what instinctually would be relevant to you at this moment in life. And think about what archetype, um, what behavior is instinctually correct for you. Because if you follow these behaviors, they are already primed to guide you towards those things which will make you grow and develop in a healthy, like relative healthy way. So, because I think corruption, soul corruption can occur from doing things that are wrong Doing things at the wrong moment in your life, like losing your virginity too early, for example. So listen to what your, pain, your, pain, your pain capacity is and be, of what, be aware of what you can handle because you will know what has hurt you in the past and something will have hurt you because that is inherent in life. So don't do those things. Don't, don't try to skip stages in your life because then you hop, you jump an archetype or you avoid an archetype, and that gives rise to a complex and pathologies, like mental pathologies, you suffer it. But try and do those things which are healthy and make sense to your stage of development, because they are already primed to be the right thing for you. And they will, they will avoid you from doing things which are unnatural and which might traumatize you, which might corrupt your soul. But that's, that's a very sort of like, um, like general, um, abstract uh, advice on how to uh, grow and expose yourself to the suffering of life without it uh, corrupting you. Because there's, there's, there's like a, a micro level of analysis of how to conduct yourself on a micro level with your behavior to avoid yourself corrupting yourself. And that would be stuff like um, um, the way you communicate with people, uh, the way you handle people on a micro level um, yeah, and like how to conduct yourself on a day-to-day -day basis, let's say. But that is a topic for another video. Um, so in conclusion, so far, I think um, a way like gradual pain exposure is a measure you can take to avoid yourself corrupting your soul from corrupting your own soul and uh, absorbing too much pain for you that you can actually handle, that your pain capacity can handle. So a first key way to do this is, is obviously to protect yourself. Don't be naive. Um, yeah, don't be naive and um, fix yourself. Focus on yourself from fi uh, from from uh, bef like that. That's key. Focus on developing yourself and making yourself resilient because like a key variable that d determines whether you whether you get corrupted or not is your brain pain capacity. And if you fix yourself, you will be less. Let's say receptive to attacks and being hurt by people attacking you uh, so that's really key and you will be able to uh, build a healthier kind of trust with people healthier stable bridges 
and if somebody pulls a bridge away, does break your trust, you are left with a foundation that can still keep you up and won't collapse with uh, and like make you fall into a hole. And finally, also, um, do those things which seem right at the moment in your life because they are already kind of primed to be um, to entail a pain capacity that is maybe adequate for your pain, pain capacity or which will sub subject you to a certain amount of pain which will be adequate to what you can handle at that moment in life. And don't do those things which are not right for you at that moment in life because you would be skipping archetypes, you would be avoiding instinctual behaviors that are already that you're you are unconsciously already trying to manifest but if you try and block them you give rise to pathologies mentally and complexes which is a potential for a pain that might overwhelm you and traumatize you let's say so this is a this was i mean i have to say this was a very superficial uh, discussion on gradual pain exposure because an actual discussion on this would take hours and hours to sort of sufficiently and uh, properly um, address you know so please leave a comment below whether you have come up with any, uh, with any other ideas of gradual pain exposure or how you can subject yourself to life it, uh, and it's it's suffering the suffering of life which will enable you to absorb it incorporate it into your personality into the things you've experienced without it um, overwhelming you and corrupting your soul which and then uh, yeah and w how you can still get access to the wisdom of life without it hurting you too much i hope you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about self-development dating jungian psychology and how to reduce suffering in life altogether thank you for listening